I want to talk about the difference between unique distinct values and unique values. In column B here is a list with values and the first value here AA has a duplicate down here. And unique distinct values are all values except the duplicates. Or in other words, uh, the first instance of each value is represented here in column D. And unique values are values that exist only once in this list. And AA has a duplicate, so it's not unique. But BB and CC are unique values. The formula I'm going to demonstrate now extracts unique distinct values from this list here. So double click here and then paste the formula. And this formula is a regular formula, it's not an array formula, so just press enter. And then click and hold, and then drag this down and release. And this copies the formula to the cells below. Don't forget to adjust the cell reference this formula if you use it in a cell other than D2. So for example I want to use it in G3 and to do that I need to change this argument here in the counter function. And right now it is D2 but I want it to be the cell just above the current cell. I'm working with and now simply press enter and then copy this and it works fine. So keep in mind that you need to adjust this cell reference here. So how does this formula work? Let's begin with the count if function. And let's start with the first cell, D3. So I'm copying the county function and I'm going to enter it in this cell mesh here. And it has the same size as the list of values here. And an equal sign. This one needs to be entered as an array formula so you can see all the values. And what this does is that it, if we click in the formula, you can see that the first argument is this cell here, unique distinct list. And the second argument is this cell range here. So what the count if function does is that it counts this value in this cell range here. And if it's not found in this cell, it returns 0. And if it's not here, it returns 0. So it returns an array of values. The next thing we want to check is if it is equal to zero. So I'm going to use the next column and enter it. This counter function and equal sign and a zero. So this will return true if the value in the array is zero and it will return false if it is not zero. And you can see that they all return true. The 
next step is to divide 1 with the county function and the logical expression. I'm going to copy that and show you. And since true is equal to 1 and false is equal to 0, this will return 1 in each cell. Next thing I want to explain is how a lookup function works. It needs to be the list it is looking in, and that will be the second argument. It must be sorted for it to work. But in this case, I'm only going to use one or uh, an error. I'll show you that error later on. And the lookup function uses two in the first argument, and it will return the last value in this array that is equal to one. And since all are equal to one, the last value will be returned and the count if that the lookup function has a third argument and that is the cell range that will keep no will have the value you want you look for so this if it find if it returns the last value in the array, the corresponding value in this cell range here will be returned. And you can see that this value here is the last value here. So the question then is what happens in the second cell? And now you can see that D2 cell range cell reference d2 changes between this and this and if we click up here you can see that this cell range here now has two cells i'm going to copy the county function so you can see that the array it returns is zero except the last value. So now the formula knows that this value here has been returned. And if I copy this once again and use the logical x equal sign. To build this logical expression and you can now see that they all except the last value returns true this one is false and what happens if we divide one with false and false is equal to zero We can't divide a number with zero, so it will return an error. Here it is. The lookup function lets you find a value in the cell range and return the corresponding value in another cell range. And here is a quick example. Look up, and the value I'm looking for is 2, and I'm looking in this cell range, and I want to return a value in this cell range. And for this to work, it is important to have these values here sorted, and if you don't have them sorted, 
you will get weird results from time to time. And if I change this to 2.5, it still finds the second value here and returns the corresponding value. But if I change this to 3, it now finds 3 and returns the corresponding value C. But in our case, that is a bit special. Uh, we only have an array of ones or, or an error. And if they look up function finds an error, it ignores it. So in our case, we are looking for the value 2 in this array here. And since 1 is the largest value in this array, it, return, it finds the last value and returns the corresponding value. And in this case, it ignores the error here. So in the second cell here, the array is this array here. And the lookup function looks for 2 and finds it in the last cell. And then it returns the value in this cell range here. So that is why this value here is, this name here is in the second place. If we continue and look at the last cell in this cell range here and copy this part of the formula into it here it's now obvious that all the values almost all of them except one has been shown in a cell in a previous cell above this cell here but there is one left and that is this value this name here you can see that the array here shows that so in the last cell the lookup function finds number one here and returns the corresponding value which is this value here 